Hello everyone and welcome to this third episode of Akiket Modeling. My name is Namara Allen. So previously we put in some walls and then added some doors and these arches. So today we are going to add in some windows and put the columns that you are seeing here. Let's get to it. So we will begin with window one. So I need you to go to the design tab and choose window. So when it is open, we get something close to what is given us and that will be a triple window. So after putting in a triple window, you begin with preview and positioning and put 1.5 by 1.5, which is good, and 900 from the ground. And then you want to position it in the middle. So we go to basic window settings and you want it to be a little bit detailed. The middle sash is going to be fixed glass, but the side one is going to be side hung and then side two is going to be mirrored such that this opens to this side and this other opens to the other side. So you want to go to shape, which is above uh, window settings and opening, and then you check on the upper transom and for now I want to divide it. Then I need you to check uniform distances for, because this is uniform. And then we want to, this height is good for the transom. And then we want to go to the transom such So we put in, uh, vents in these transoms in side one and side two another thing that you want to tweak is the frame widths so you click here on uniform frame width and i want to have it as small as possible so we have more glass to the window and when that is done you want to go to fixtures and we add a seal, as you can see. So I prefer a stone seal. You can choose any of that in the drop down. And let's look at how it looks like. And that is quite good. So we say OK. And then we put the window right in the middle there. So I'm going to show you a quick way of putting window 2. So window one is almost the same as window two, just that this is a double sash and this one is triple. So you want to go to the settings and when this is up, you will put in the dimensions for window two, which are 1.2 width by 1.2 height. And this is 1.2 from the ground. And then we want to scroll and where you see double sash you want to control alt such that we keep everything that is there but when we press control alt and then click on the double sash not what happens this becomes a double sash so that's a quick way you can transfer everything that we have done to that and then you can also put it in the middle so we say, okay, if you're happy with that, and then we will place this window right in the middle. And another way you can make sure that it is in the middle, you can go to document, you grab a line, and then you, after putting the line there from mid center to center, then you can hover over there because uh, our snap is on half when you hover over there. So you can drag this and position it in the center of that room. So you can remove the reference. So you can now place another window, which is going to be our final window. So to place it, you want to go to window settings. And this time, Let's do the same method. Uh, you can control 
old and then click on this window 23 and there you go it's a single sash so we want to make this 600 and then this 1.2 and then this is going to be 1.2 from the ground this should be centered and then when we go to the settings uh the only thing that we might want to change for this is the height of this maybe this is too high need it 950 so we can say okay and place it right there and as well you can go to document get a line put it uh, somewhere you can press shift to keep it in line and after placing it, you can hover before you drag Ctrl D this window to the center and you have positioned it perfectly in the center. And we want this window to also be at the WC. This one not, not uh, centered, but you could take the window here and say maybe I need it 500 from that point such that it is 500 from here to there. So that is how you position the windows. Let's first see what we have done. So we make some changes, go A5, and the windows are here, looks good. Looks Now here we have an issue. If you have something like this, you might want to reduce that height, which is going to be in shape. So also take it to 950, such that we have 250 for the transom and it is fixed. So now let's get all these windows by clicking on window and say control A, and then we want to go to opening lines and overwrite the mode of view and remove them. And I think I'm quite happy with this and what is happening. Okay, so when that is done, we want to get to the columns. So the columns, we are going to go to columns here and then we want to select a circular column and then we want to make it 200 obviously and then we need to go to this segmented option so we add two more segments if you look at this reference you have one two three segments of that same column so in these segments the percentages will always change uh, so we need this to be about 60 percent and then this is going to be smaller as you can see from the reference. So for now let's use like 5% and the rest will be the column beneath. So the column beneath is going to be uh, square and the column in between is going to be also square and it is going to be a bit bigger. So let's make it like 250 and it will pop out. So we want to begin with the first one. So let's make it white. You check for it and then you link. And then the mid one, we also want to make it white. So find it quickly and place it. So we also want to make this, the final segment, we want to make it uh, stone. So we go to stone and choose stone mark two and that's what it will look like. So you also want to change material of the column. So you want to change to concrete for the core of the material and say, okay. So now we can place the column here and then duplicate it here and duplicate it even there. So let's look at that. And yeah, there you have it. Uh, although we need to adjust the height thereof, we need our columns to be 
2.4 from the ground. So we will need to put in something like negative 600. Let's see, yeah, 2.4, yeah. And that is good, 2.4, this is not yet, but we can fix that in a minute. So let's put in the beams. So if you look at the reference, we have that beam that is uh, carved. So we go to beams and when this dialog box is up, you want to reduce this width, maybe 250, just a, a bit beyond the wall. And then the height, well, from the reference, the height is a bit smaller. I will use 100 and then uh, we want to place it 2.4 from the ground. So when that is done, the other thing I can change is from segment. Uh, the material it is going to be concrete and then we can enable these, link them and make it white. So we will begin to place in the beam. So let's begin on the first point. Make sure this is selected and then you click the first point and the second, third and this final point here. So for us to use this beam, we need to add in some more control points. So we need to add a point where this beam leaves and starts uh, on that wall. And then we also want to add some more anchor points on this beam. Just select it and then you create a point there and also create a point around that point. And then also create a point bef at this column, at the beginning of this column, and then a point at the beginning. Make sure you press shift so you don't sh uh, change it. And then you have placed these anchor points. So now when we do put that curve here, we are not affecting all the way to the column. You see what I'm talking about in a minute. So with this, the best way to put those curves, you want to go to an elevation. So we already have this existing elevation. We increase to cover this area. So we right click and say open with current view. So this is what we have done. You have this beam, which uh, is supposed to curve from here up to there. So you want to select here, click anywhere along there, and then select this curve. And there you have it. So I think 250 should work. Yes, it looks good. Uh -huh. So you also select this line, choose the curve and uh, 250 should be able to work to 250. 250 should be able to work. Well, we will look at that if it is not currently working. 250. Ah, here it looks good. Uh, I think we might need to redo this. So I need you to click this again and then you remove it and then let's try it once more we say 250 and there you have it it looks pretty good so let's go in 3d so this is what we have done so far and the way you want to fix this is we can select these as the target so right click and say connect solid element operations and then you want to select solid element operations and then you want to have them as targets then you use this and only one is selected so if you uncheck here the rest of the beams will be selected and get these as operators so when you have them as operators you can uh select with downward extrusion so that when you execute 
to, you have uh, cleaned out the things that were popping here. So once we have done that, you realize Akikad is doing some funny things along here, and that's because of the intersection. So I find that a bit annoying, but one way you can do with it, you can just remove this intersection so you can stop your wall just before you reach this intersection, so somewhere like there. So let's also bring this wall just before you click here, so somewhere like there, so let's see. And this looks pretty good. And this doesn't matter because we are going to have uh, another element, if you see from the reference, which is going to be along that. So we, are, we can always hide it. So behind we are going to just have the uh, beam and then we just draw like so. So let's see what that looks like. You want to place it just above that beam to cover that area and that looks good. And it also has the same issue so you can also decide to move it and somewhere there. So it looks just a bit cleaner. So when we render, you will not notice this crevice. Uh, I don't know, it's, it's a, an issue with Akikad, but you know, we can always work along with it. So, the final thing that I want us to do with this tutorial, we are going to add in a flow slab. So a flow slab would be easy to add in. So we will go to slab. And when it is selected, you want to check the simple one. This is the composite one. So the simple one, we can put like 150 and then we can just use the default uh, color of uh, concrete and then we place in the slab. So currently I have this selected. So if you select these two points, let me escape that, select point one and point two so it moves along that axis and let's stop it here. And then we select it again by hovering over and this, make sure this magnet is selected. And then when you select that, you can click on the side and now we choose a plus. So we add in this other section and there we are. So you can remove these nodes, which, so we put one node here, such that when you begin to place in this veranda we also add, now this time we are going to choose this point way of adding a slab. So we click point one, point two, point three, and that is it. So you have added in a floor slab and it is looking pretty good. So join me in the next episode where we start to uh, put in these feature walls and add the roof.